Well, the U.S. and Israel are set to hold what is being called the largest and most significant war games in the two allies' history. U.S. Assistant Secretary for Political and Military Affairs Andrew Shapiro says more than 5,000 American and Israeli forces will participate in the exercise. They will simulate Israel's ballistic missile system. Shapiro says the joint exercise will also allow the U.S. to learn from Israel's experience of warfare. Shapiro also emphasized the Obama administration's support for Israel, calling bilateral relations broader, deeper, and more intense than ever before. He added that Washington will continue to provide Israel with $3 billion in aid every year, despite challenging economic times. For more on the U.S.-Israeli war games, uh, joining us on the line from Los Angeles is Mr. James Morris. He is editor of AmericaHijack.com. Sir, welcome to the program. First of all, tell us about the significance of the timing of carrying out these war games. Oh, thank you for having me back on Press TV. And that's actually America-Hijack.com, and I very much appreciate Press TV putting that out there on air. Well, I think it's very um, significant because uh, you have a situation where Israel uh, has been threatening to attack Iran. And I have a post at my America-Hijack.com blog about that. And uh, it basically is uh, tinyurl.com forward slash Israeli attack on Iran. And you can see the various articles posted there in the comment section as well. It's very concerning. Uh, the uh, pro-Israel lobby in America, APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and uh, the neoconservatives, which, are, which compose the upper echelon of that lobby, have been wanting uh, a war against Iran for quite some time now. And let's just hope that uh, these war games don't coincide uh, with uh, an Israeli attack on Iran. And, uh, you, you know, there are many America first patriotic Americans like myself here up of these wars for Israel in the Middle East. Uh, we're fed up of our government, the U.S. government, covering up for Israeli crimes and murder against Americans, including the deliberate Israeli attack on the USS Liberty back in 1967. And I'd like to also um, make a point that how many times has, has Iran an attacked American ship like the USS Liberty and murdered American sailors and Marines like Israel did? And we also have the Israeli military historian, Martin Van Crefeld, who has actually threatened to use uh, nuclear weapons on European cities. Why isn't that ever brought up? Why, why don't we t talk about the IAEA uh, inspecting the uh, nuclear facilities in Israel, where we have Israel reportedly having two to 400 nuclear weapons? But America doesn't uh, allow that to happen, but we're pushing against Iran now. We have this IAEA report coming out next week, and it's very interesting to me here in the news, so it's being reported that that's reflecting negatively upon Iran. How do, how do we know that? Um, does this pro-Israel lobby, APAC, and similar have influence on that IAEA to have a report to come out to that effect? These are all very interesting questions that any America first American like myself wants to know. We are sick and tired of fighting Israel's wars in the Middle East, getting uh, thousands of Americans wounded and injured like we saw in Iraq, like we saw in Afghanistan. Uh, we went into Afghanistan because of 9-11, and 9-11 happened because of support for Israel. Enough is enough. We better not have another war for Israel and Iran. Otherwise, we're going to have an uprising against the Zionists here in America. You can bank on it. Interesting notions you mentioned there, but uh, Mr. Morse, how do the average Americans, the 99%, of course, feel about their tax money, which is a significant amount of that, goes each year to Israel and now to war games with the regime, which is technically at war with many countries in the Middle East? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, unfortunately, most Americans have no clue. And I think you can go back to the example of when I was in touch with the CBS uh, news radio, actually the television news program, 60 Minutes. And you can find uh, the email exchange that I had with CBS News 60 Minutes trying to get that news organization, which is considered to be the flagship news program in America. It airs every Sunday night nationally and is seen around the world. And I tried to get them to cover the Walton Mearsheimer book, The Israel Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy. And I was trying to get them... Uh, to talk about that because it, it indicated how the pro-Israel lobby, the neoconservatives included along with AIPAC, had pushed for us to get into Iraq, as I said here, but also wanting to get us into a war with Iran. Now, 60 Minutes deliberately did not cover that. 
Now, I think they didn't cover that several years ago when the Mershon Walt book came out because they don't want the American public to know that we're just about ready to go into another war for Israel and Iran, which could involve Russia and China and become the next world war. So going back to your question, most of them regard how much money is flowing to Israel to begin with. And you've got a, a U.S. ambassador to Israel, Jewish as well, I might add, Daniel Sapiro, and he'd recently told a group, uh, the Jewish, po um, Jewish People Policy Institute, JPPI, that Israel drives all U.S. policies. That wasn't reported in our news. And you can actually go to my America-Hijack.com website again, and you can get to the exact link for that. And it's tinyurl.com forward slash Israel drives all U.S. policies. I mean, it's incredible. Most Americans don't have a clue as, yes, the 99% of people are, are, are out of work. These uh, Zionist bankers on Wall Street have basically uh, stolen a lot of that money. They've, involved, uh, they've invested in credit to Portugal and, Spain, Portugal and Spain falls. The U.S. will go down and it will make what happened in 2008 with Lehman Brothers pale in comparison. Not only are we facing possibly another world war if there's an attack on Iran by Israel, which would draw the U.S. into it, as uh, FBI whistleblower Colleen Raleigh had said on my friend USS Liberty Sower, Phil Turney's Your Voice Counts radio show, but we could also be facing a world war and another depression. It's unacceptable. Very well. From Los Angeles, Mr. James Morris, editor of America-Hijack.com. Uh, I hope I got it right that time, sir.